Hello friends, today is going to be a quick explainer on the Criminal Procedure Identification Bill of 2022. This bill hai, it talks about how evidence is going to be collected and iske through our criminal investigation system ko kaise better. Jayega. And this is going to be a replacement of the Identification of Prisoners Act 1920. So today we are going to look into the bill itself and do a comparative analysis from the 1920 Act and the 2022 Act. So let's jump right into the class itself. Now the Criminal Procedure Identification Bill seeks to collect what are terms as measurements from certain classes of persons and further allows for processing, storage, prevention, dissemination and destruction of this with the stated aim that it's going to create a much better environment for investigation in criminal matters and prevention of crimes. This precursor is the 198th report, 198th report or Law Commission report of 1980 as well as the Justice Malimut Malimut Committee. Now both these spoke about how we need to enhance the evidence collection system because the 1920 Act itself came so far back and there have been so many advancement in technologies that we need to take advantage of this in the current day, day and era, right? So let's do a quick comparative analysis of the Prisoners Act with the Criminal Procedure Identification Bill of 2022. The first provision that we're going to look into is what can be collected under the bill. Now, when the Prisoners Act 1920 came, we had technology sustainable enough for us to collect only fingerprints, footprints and photographs. Because 1920 bill, we didn't have any sort of digital or forensic advancements. Now, compared to what we have now, especially with the involve, with the creation of UIDAI, the iris scanning as well as DNA profiling, we can go ahead and take iris and retina scans on top of that. We can take biological samples, physical samples and behavioral attributes. Behavioral attributes will include signatures, handwriting as well as other things about the person himself which can be deciphered from an expert, from a behavioral ana analyst. And all of this is can be collected with reference to section 53 and 53A of the CRPC. Now, the biological sample collection is under the section 53A, uh, 53 talks about how blood, blood stains, semen, swabs and, and septum, sweat, hair samples, fingernail clippings, everything that can be taken with the use of modern scientific techniques including DNA profiling. And section 53A ye kata hai ki you can also take the name, age as well as any bodily marks or injuries that the person has. So with the section 53A, what the criminal, uh, criminal procedure uh, uh, identification bill does is it expands the type of samples that can be collected. It expands the type of samples being collected. Now this itself is a really good thing. This way, a person can be pro not only profiled but identified as, as well from scenes of investigation, scenes of crime, right? But the, there's there's a certain problem, there's a certain giveaway that happens when we look at who may be compelled to provide these measurements. Now, in the previous act, the 1920 Act, in the 1920 Act, it said that a person who is convicted or arrested for offences punishable for rigorous imprisonment of one year or more. So the conviction back then for collection of such evidences was with the bar of one year or more, they had to be convicted for one, arrested or convicted for one year or more. Ek saal ke se zada ke punishment ke liye, ek saal ya ek saal se zada ke punishment ke liye, tabhi ye evidence collect kiya ja sakta tha. But ab, with the criminal procedure identification bill, any person who has been convicted of any offense can, can be compelled to provide measurements. इससे क्या हो रहा है इससे ये हो रहा है कि अगर आप कल रैश ड्राइविंग कर रहे हो और आपको रैश ड्राइविंग करते हुए पकड़ा गया है जिसका इंप्रिजनमेंट इज द मैक्सिमम इंप्रिजनमेंट फॉर दैट इज 6 मंथ्स उस केस में भी द द अथॉरिटी हु इज ऑथराइज्ड टू कलेक्ट सैंपल्स कैन कंपेल यू टू गिव योर मेजरमेंट्स इवन इन दैट केस वेयर द मेजरमेंट इज इफ यू हैव डन सम फाइनेंशियल फ्रॉड और एनी अगर चोरी हुई है छोटी सी या फिर कोई फाइनेंशियल मिसहैप्स हुए हैं जिनमें कोई भी इंप्रिजनमेंट या कोई भी पनिशमेंट की कोई भी पनिशमेंट कैन बी गिवन अंडर द स्कोप ऑफ लॉ 
इवन दैट पर्सन कैन बी कंपेल टू गिव देयर मेजरमेंट्स ठीक है एंड याद रखना मेजरमेंट्स के अंदर ये सब कुछ आता है इट फ्रॉम द सैंपल्स वी सॉ बी इट रेटिना स्कैन फिंगर प्रिंट्स एवरीथिंग टू बायोलॉजिकल सैंपल्स बट बायोलॉजिकल सैंपल्स डज हैव अ बार व्हिच विल टॉक अबाउट फर्दर नाउ इन द 1920 एक्ट इट सेज द पर्सन हु हैज बीन ऑर्डर्ड टू गिव सिक्योरिटी फॉर गुड बिहेवियर एंड फॉर मेंटेनिंग पीस एंड दिस सेम क्लॉज इज आल्सो अवेलेबल in our uh, the 2022 act which says that a person has to give who has been ordered to give security for maintaining peace and good behavior under section 117 of the crpc ye jo security or good behavior hai ye kya hota hai when a person when a person is known to cause certain problems unse surety li jati hai and these problems are mentioned under article uh, under section 107 to 110 of the crpc these reasons which which are covered under section 107 110 are first that this person may be likely to breach the peace or disturb the public tranquility of an area this person might be doing some seditious work or is trying to publish some something seditious about the state they can also be concealing their own identity to commit such to commit a cognizable offense Now we've already spoken what cognizable and non-cognizable offenses are in our previous video. So if you haven't, if you have any doubts regarding what a cognizable offense is, please refer to that video. You'll un- you'll have a clear understanding of it. And then finally, the person who is a habitual offender, a person who is a hab- habitual offender. For all these four things, the magistrate can go ahead and ask for security for good behavior. That ये सारी चीजें ये person repeat ना करे under section 117. उन लोगों से भी sample collect किया जा सकता है. ये प्रोविजन हमारे 1920 एक्ट में भी था ये प्रोविजन अब और एनहांस्ड हो गया है इन आर 2022 एक्ट एंड देन फाइनली इट सेज दैट द मैजिस्ट्रेट में ऑर्डर द मैजिस्ट्रेट में ऑर्डर इन अदर केसेस कलेक्शन फ्रॉम एनी अरेस्टेड पर्सन एनी अरेस्टेड पर्सन टू एड क्रिमिनल इन्वेस्टिगेशन विच सेज दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ अ क्रिमिनल इन्वेस्टिगेशन गोइंग इज गोइंग ऑन किसी एक पर्टिकुलर क्राइम के लिए उसका इन्वेस्टिगेशन चल रहा है अगर इस इन्वेस्टिगेशन के लिए किसी और का डीएनए सैंपल चाहिए या किसी और का कोई मेजरमेंट चाहिए वो दैट कैन बी कलेक्टेड ओनली फ्रॉम एन अरेस्टेड पर्सन अ पर्सन हु बीन अरेस्टेड बिफोर और अ पर्सन हु बीन अरेस्टेड नाउ बट दिस प्रोविजन इज अगेन एक्सपेंडेड थरली बाय गिविंग मैजिस्ट्रेट द डायरेक्शन दैट दे कैन कंपेल एनी पर्सन टू गिव मेजरमेंट्स अपॉन बींग सेटिस्फाइड दैट इट इज एक्सपीडियंट टू डू सो फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड फॉर प्रोसीडिंग अंडर सी और एनी अदर लॉ तो आप देख सकते हैं विथ द प्रोविजन दैट a person who is being arrested under any offense and the the fact that the magistrate can direct any person for helping with a particular exp- for a particular investigation can compel someone to give their measurements so this the scope of the criminal identification bill 2022 has been thoroughly expanded bahut zyada expand kar diya gaya hai ki kin kin se ye sample collect kiya ja sakta hai now isme ek एक जगह थोड़ी सी डिस्क्रेशन रखी गई है वो है द डिस्क्रेशन व्हेन इट कम्स टू बायोलॉजिकल सैंपल्स नाउ इट सेज दैट ऑल पर्सन हु आर अरेस्टेड फॉर एन ऑफेंस हैज हैव टू गिव देयर हैव टू प्रोवाइड देयर मेजरमेंट्स बट बायोलॉजिकल सैंपल्स दे दे आर गोइंग एवरी सिंगल पर्सन इज गोइंग टू कंपेल टू गिव देयर गिव देयर मेजरमेंट्स बट पर्सन हु कमिटेड ऑफेंसेस विच आर पनिशेबल विद इम्प्रिजमेंट ओवर सेवन ईयर्स और मोर or they have been arrested for an offense against a child or a woman in that case even they can even be compelled to give biological samples you can be compelled to give all your measurements other than biological samples for every other arrest but if it's any of these two offense you have to give your biological samples right now as you can see we already are able to understand that jo 1920 ka act tha it it was behind when it came to technology but the 2022 act not only has enhanced the part of technology but has also is expanded the scope to see to to include every single person who's being arrested of an offense to for their data to be collected now the person who may require a direct collection of data pehle kya hota tha in the 1920 act the investigating officer or the officer in charge of the police station or rank of sub inspector were the only people who could collect data but now because there is so much data being collected is bill ne kya kiya is bill ne us bar ko bhi niche kar diya and ab ye bola hai ki anyone officer in charge of the police station so is there only but anyone with the rank of head constable or above 
or in addition a head warder of a prison can also collect samples and we already know that the, cons the number of constable is very very high when compared to the number of sub inspectors and people above that rank so they have also increased the number of the the people who are going to be responsible for collection of that data okay and we'll see what sort of problem that might cause when we talk about the problems that this bill might have and then again they have diluted the measure of it previously being directed by a magistrate now it can be directed by a metropolitan magistrate or a judicial magistrate of first class and in case of person required to maintain good behavior or peace as we saw in section 117 of crpc uh, it, it can be an exit executive magistrate as well so the scope of the law has not only been expanded to use more technology but it has been expanded to use more uh, to collect data from more people as well as the people who are going to collect the data itself had the scope of them also has been expanded right now where is this collected data being recorded and who is going to record it it is going to be recorded by the ncrb or the national crime records bureau national crime records bureau is going to maintain a digital and electronic uh, uh, a digital and electronic database of these measurements and they are going to be the person who is going to be the nodal agency for distributing all these information throughout central and state agencies and this distribution is going to be it's going to be carried out through the criminal uh, crime and criminal tracking network system cctns ab isse kya pata chal raha hai humko humko ye pata chal raha hai ki ye jo sample aap se collect kiya jayega this is going to be this is going to be launched into a national national nationwide grid this information is going to be available in every single police station who is part of the cctns right and then the state governments can notify agencies for collection storage and sharing of the measurements themselves so the state governments can notify agency agencies to store the measurements itself not the record what what have you understood from those measurements but the measurements itself so for for this iska matlab kya hai ki aapka jo measurement liya gaya hai aapka jo blood sample liya gaya hai isi ko share kar, kar sakte hain state governments they don't have to they no, not only are going to share the data from the blood, blood sample but they can share the blood sample itself right and obviously this is going to be stored digitally and electronically so you can see that not only the scope has expanded but also how this data is going to be stored and shared has also been expanded right so take no the use of technology is not in not only in collection of evidence but also in disseminating this information throughout the na na national and state grids right then the law says that the data collected will be retained in a digital and electronic format for 75 years for 75 years which is basically your lifetime so the data that has been collected is going to be stored for 75 years and it also says that if a person has been acquitted after a, after all the trials and everything they have been released without a trial or have been acquitted even in that case like even even though your data should be dis destroyed technically if you have been acquitted of your crime after all your trials are over even in th that case the court or the magistrate may direct the retention of such a data for after recording reasons in writing which means चांसेस आर अगर आपका केस हो जाने के बाद भी आपके डेटा को डेटा बेस में रखा जा सकता है नाउ इन इन केस वेयर यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू गिव दिस मेजरमेंट इन अ केस वेयर यू डोंट फील कंपेल टू गिव दिस मेजरमेंट द एनी 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 लॉफुल पुलिस और प्रिजन ऑफिसर कैन कंपेल यू टू गिव दिस मेजरमेंट अंडर द रूल्स एट बिन मेड एंड इफ यू रिफ्यूज टू गिव सच अ मेजरमेंट आफ्टर दे आर आस्किंग यू टू गिव सच मेजरमेंट this refusal is punishable offense under section 186 of the indian penal code so not only has the scope of the law being expanded not only from where the data has been can be collected has been expanded and the storage has been expanded but also a person cannot the a person cannot readily refuse to give their own data right because it is going to be pun, uh, punishable offense ab dekhiye iske you can see that the implication of a act like this is going to be immense if if i talk about constitutionally the reason why i'm why we are not going to have an in depth discussion on the constitutional provisions that this bill violates is because ye hamare honorable supreme court ka kaam hai when this law comes to the scrutiny of the supreme court the supreme court is going to decide if it's it's violating certain constitutional provisions or not but i can tell you right now that certain provisions like article 14 which talks about equality ye jo 
पुलिस ऑफिसर्स और वार्डन ऑफिसर्स को जो एक आर्बिट्री पावर दे, दे दी गई है कि यू कैन गो हेड इन कलेक्ट सैम्पल्स फ्रॉम एवरी वन सो द डिस्क्रेशन हैज बिन गिवन ऑन दैम कि वो कब कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं किससे कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं कैसे कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं गोज अगेंस्ट इक्वालिटी द राइट टू इक्वालिटी इनफैक्ट द फैक्ट दैट हमने देखा है कि क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर आइडेंटिफिकेशन बिल में दे वो ऑल्सो स्पोकन अबाउट बिहेव बिहेवियरल एविडेंस कलेक्टिंग बिहेवियरल एविडेंसेज इवन इन दैट केस इन द इन इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑफ राइट टू प्राइवेसी वी सॉ दैट सेल्वी वर्सेज कर्नाटका केस में यू कैन नॉट डू ब्रेन मैप मैपिंग और नार्को एनालिसिस एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट बिकॉज दैट गोज अगेन गोज अगेंस्ट अ पर्सन ओन लिबर्टी इफ अ पर्सन डज नॉट वॉन्ट टू सेल्फ इंक्रिमिनेट दम सेल्स दैन टेकिंग सर्च सैम्पल्स might lead to incrimination right so this goes against article 20 sub clause 3 and then finally we have right to privacy if you go ahead and collect the data of every single person store the data for 75 years and also cannot give, don't give a provision where a person can refuse giving consent for such a collection then it is probably going to be violative of article uh, 21 and right to privacy so ye sari cheeze aayengi but this is going to be decided by our honorable supreme court what you and i can look at is the other, are the other problems that the the bill is going to face so the bill is probably going to face a lot of challenges when it comes to science and regulation because see evidence collection is not only about the person but also about the technology being employed so if you look at the scientific and validated scientific validity in databasing you will understand that there are no scientific evidences to support certain fund, foundational validity of certain type of measurements measurements like what measurements like handwriting hand, handwriting recognition ab iske piche jo science hai wo itna solid nahi hai footprint recognition iske piche ka bhi science is a little doing dwindling it's a it's at a very nascent stage uh, voice vo- voice analysis voice over analysis even uh, uh, iris and data scans uidi ke case mein when uidi was uh, was taken to the supreme court in that in those uidi cases uidi themselves admitted that the failure rate of iris scans is about 8.54% so they themselves the iris scan itself is not an absolute measure so there are a lot of such measurements which do not have scientific validity themselves and yet these measurements are being taken now india currently also lacks adequate scientific standards for examination of such measurements for purpose of investigation for example agar koi uh, because the the evidence the uh, uh, analysis of evidence has not been developed in india so much kal agar aapke paas behavioral samples hain kal aapke paas uh, forensic samples hain you we don't have the technology right now to forensically analyze a uh, behavioral patterns body language patterns or uh, patterns in your handwriting changes in your horm- uh, hormones or blood sample changes uh, uh, blood composition changes how th- this uh, the blood is being transported how the blood is being stored how this w- what is the compromise when it comes to storing such uh, live blood samples things like that have not been developed in india to a level where they can be used for criminal investigation purposes this is a good step towards it but we are not at a position where itna sara jo sample collect ho raha hai uska jo standardization hoga hum wahan tak pahunche nahi hai abhi tak right the next measure is collection of measurements now you have certainly allowed people at the head constable level and warder level to go ahead and collect samples ab inki jo capacity building karni padegi it's a huge administrative task these people are not equipped towards collecting evidences that to such broad evidences so there is going to be a big differentiation in the type of quality of evidence being collected a person might be very good at evidence collection another person might be bad at it but that coll- that evidence is still still being collected and put into the database the same way so there is and upar se there is no in this the bill does not talk about infrastructure development when it comes to laboratories so where will these this huge number of pro, data being processed uske liye where are we, we don't have enough scientific or uh, forensic laboratories jahan pe ye kiya jayega neither do uh, do we have a provision for standardization and quality management of the data being collected because you have to train so many constables you have to train so many water level people to go ahead and do collection uh, sample collection तो इसमें एक बहुत बड़ी डिस्पैरिटी आ जाएगी बिटवीन बाय द टाइप ऑफ मेजरमेंट दैट इज बीइंग यूज्ड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस डिस्पैरिटी कलेक्शन एंड स्टोरेज ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल सैंपल्स एंड देयर एनालिसिस बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट इफ अ एविडेंस कलेक्टेड इज नॉट ऑफ द सेम क्वालिटी दैट माइट हैम्पर द क्रिमिनल इन्वेस्टिगेशन रादर दैन रादर दैन सपोर्ट इट 
like for example information collected and stored may go beyond the individual from whom the measurement is being collected now in the previous case there was no quality standard of the like collection in collection of measurements there is no quality standard now in when you collecting such data especially when you collecting genetic data you are not only collecting the data of that person but you are also collecting and you are ending up collecting a profile of the whole family structure for example there might be some genetic diseases this person is suffering from right which might run across the whole family now here you're not only uh, giving data of the person himself but they, you're ended up ending up giving the data of the whole family so this the scope itself goes beyond so we don't have measurement standards and at the same time the scope goes beyond just the person who's arrested right and then the storage of these biological samples is not going to be easy if a warden level person is collecting a data and uh, collecting a sample and if this person is not able to store the data properly that itself is going to hamper the whole investigation right and storage of such huge number of data in every single police station is also not uh, feasible or we don't have the technology to do that right so we can see that the 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 whole bill is a very tall order you've increased the number of samples being collected you've increased the number of people who are collecting samples yet we don't have a standardization system and finally it talks about the storage of record of measurements now criminal investigations are undertaken with respect to context of a particular case which means that every single case might not require you to take blood samples every single case might not require you to take saliva samples might not require you to take fingerprints but yet if you are collecting so many samples and so many data you are expanding the scope of the scale scope and scale of the investigation itself which might hamper the investigation upar se we don't even have like we spoke pehle we don't have such expertise when it comes to handling such data so all in all you have created a huge database that might not readily help in criminal investigation and at the same time by expanding the scope of the bill so much you've reached a stage where chances are that this might not only hamper criminal investigation itself but might also go beyond certain provisions that are available in the constitution but this is it this is the bill the bill has become a law and now it's up to the supreme court and it's up to the government how they are going to create supporting systems for this bill to actually work out this bill is a very good bill when it comes to criminal investigation but we have to see all these issues that we spoke about and how it's going to be resolved so thank you so much for uh, like coming to this class and understanding about this bill and if you want me to make another uh, video on the dna bill because this bill closely uh, walks the same path as the dna bill so let me know in the comments down below and i'll see you in the next class all the best